What is going on guys? Welcome to your 25th Java game development tutorial and in this tutorial we're going to be working in the main class or the class with the main method and we're actually going to be running our sprite. So now that we have that sprite class all made we can actually create an object from it and make a sprite on our screen and uh, well just watch it move around I guess. So let's go ahead and in case we really mess up anything um, instead of just writing or fixing or editing this main Bucky class, go ahead and copy everything in here, create a new class, and name it Bucky2. And this way, in case we F anything up, we have we pretty much mess it up on this new class instead of our old one. So now we know we have an old class to go back to if need be. So of course we gotta name this Bucky2, 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 B.run. So bam, how easy was that? So the first thing that we have to do is we need to import one more thing. Import JavaX dot swing dot all. Just to import all of the JavaX swing components because we're going to be using them. And after this, remember we had all of our objects so we can access the different classes. And since we just built a new class called Sprite, And we can't put S because we use that in our screen manager class. We're actually going to have to type out Sprite. So I know that's the first time I named an object that was bigger than two letters. But I mean, it will save you guys from confusion. So now what we need to do is in our scroll down to your load images method. And when you load images after you create your animation right here look you created your animation that has two scenes in it go ahead and under this what do we need to do the first thing that we need to do is create a new sprite object and remember a sprite is the same thing as your image and it's the same thing as your animation they're one and the same so go that sprite and set it equal to new sprite and as your parameters take what animation you want to use this pretty much is saying what do you want to make move around the screen and we're just going to use that a right there the animation so now this animation was of a guy blinking in one spot and now that we're turn turning into sprite he's going to be blinking but he's going to be moving around the screen instead of staying in one spot so after this what do we need to do well we need to start him out with a velocity and it can be anything you guys want but sprite dot set velocity x I'm gonna go with like 0 0.3 f um, yours could, this is pretty much just a speed um, how fast is he going the x left or right and we also need to set his y velocity if we only set one then he would I mean if we put this at 0, 0.0 then he would only go back and forth but we want them going all different kinds of angles up and down left and right so we can either set those we can even set those at two different um, velocities but I'm just gonna keep them the same so I mean why not right so now when we're done with that we need to go down to movie loop and right here our movie loop method right here and this is the main loop that plays the movie and what do we need to do in here well instead of updating our animation right here we can go ahead and take this out right here and we're going to make a new update method that's going to be time passed right there and this is going to take control of all of our updates and as you can see this is underlined right here because um, we didn't create the method yet we're going to be creating it later and if you're saying alright if this updates the sprite what the heck updates the animation well if we go in um, your sprite class right here we updated the animation when we called this update method for the sprite so that's why we don't need to update the animation twice since we called it here that's why we are able to take it out in our main movie loop so now we can't forget to build an update method um, we'll be doing that later but for now let's go ahead and scroll down and I guess we have to do one more thing and let me see if I forgot anything we updated that alright in our draw method right here let's go ahead and take out this G draw image because it's no longer gonna draw an image anymore actually we can just go ahead and take this part out instead of drawing a single image 
what it's going to draw is that sprite. So let's go ahead and the first thing we want to do is go sprite dot get image. So instead of drawing just a single image, we're going to want to draw the sprite, whatever's in the sprite class and whatever image it is. So it's going to go ahead down here to where you get image and it's going to return whatever in image is playing at the animation at that time. And now we have to give it the parameters. Where do you want to appear on the screen? Or in other words, where do you want me to draw this image pretty much? Well, we want you to draw it at get X and the get Y value. Since this is going to be changing, we can't just type in 400, 300. Because these are the values that need to be changing constantly. And what we need to do to this is actually round it off. Since whenever we call get X and get Y, it might give us a decimal point number. And if we say, all right, draw it 1.3 pixels, it's going to be like 1.3 pixels is either one or two. Make up your mind. So that's why we need to do math dot round. And in your round method, type sprite dot get X. And what this is going to do is at an X value, it's going to round it off the pixel off because remember you can't draw on half a pixel it's either one two five ten or whatever it has to be a whole number and it's going to get that x value of where a sprite should be and draw there so now let's go ahead and copy this copy and do the same thing for y control v get y and for your image observer go ahead and type in null and don't forget a comma right there so now what we're doing is we're drawing the sprite and what this means get image all right do you want the guy's eyes to be open or eyes closed well that depends on the animation we want it to draw at the x value round it off to the nearest nearest pixel at the y value round it off to the nearest pixel near nearest pixel and for the image observer just put null because i mean we don't need to go over that right now so I guess the only thing we have to do here, the only error we're getting, is we need to build this update method. And this update method updates the position of the sprite when it goes off your screen. So in the next tutorial, we'll be doing that. In the next tutorial, we will be finally watching the sprite bounce around our screen. So thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and I will see you next tutorial.